kids, welcome to Styles Rumble effects time thing. I guess it'll be effects. Have no plan. <laughs> Even more so than usual. Usually by the time I'm sitting down, I turn on the camera, I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do. But today, I'm like, uh, let's do dust. The poofs? Some kind of poofy thing. Poofs are easy. Uh, you can do that with no plan. <laughs> so uh, that's where we are now. We'll see how it goes. All right, so start with a little simple poof. The first thing you want to do is figure out what direction your poof is going in. So let's just do some doodles to start with. So if something is impacting the ground in this direction, then it's going to send a poof out in every direction. It's going to get a three-dimensional poof. So you want to think about asymmetry. That's always important. Boop, boop, boop. Even think about it coming forward like this, if you're feeling fancy. And then you're going to want your dust to continue on in sensible directions, like that. So down poof, it's going to get a little bit of dispersal in all directions. An angular poof, you'll get a little bit of dust going this way, and then you'll get a lot, a lot of poof going that way. Depending on how crazy you want it. So something like if a character were to say scuff dirt, so here's a little foot and the foot scuffs back this way, you're going to want to follow the path that the foot is going. So you might have a few little poofs along here that goes, but in general you want to think of the direction that this stuff's being pushed when you're making dust. Big explosions, like if you have an explosion on a rock face. So we'll just do a fake little perspective here. Boop, boop. So if there's a, a explosion here, like they're blasting out a tunnel or something, then your explosion is going to go this way, away from the wall, and you're going to get a little bit coming this way, like that. So when you're doing your poof, you can even draw those, those lines, give yourself a direction, and then you can build your poof off of that. Remember to think three-dimensionally. And think of all these poofs as spheres. If you want your dust to really look sensible and like it's got volume and stuff in these big explosions, then you want to think three-dimensionally. And the easiest way to do that is to break your your dust up into poofs. That's why I'm drawing all these circular forms. I'm not just thinking of a flat shape. I'm giving each of these their own little volume here. So that way I'm not tracking a bunch of nonsense because this can look like if you just draw a little cloud like this, this looks like nonsense. Like what, what, what way are these going? Who even knows? But if you think of spheres, then you're going to be able to maintain your volume and track those spheres as they move along in space. So this is the first type of thing you want to think of when you, when you're doing dust. Now, of course you can do very, very simple dust. If we're doing this all directions dust, I just have a little pin dot here just so I know where like the center is. All these little poofs are coming up from the center. So I can start with this. I could even start by doing big flat shapes and just kind of keep in my head where these front ones are because you're going to break this down into one or two simpler tones. You're not going to do it a ton of detailed stuff over this. And while you're following your dust along, this one I'm just doing kind of an every directional dust. I'm going to have my little single form break up into a few little pieces just to give it a little bit more interest. We can think of this front one here. As I later, once I'm finished and I'm happy with this, I'm going to go in and add a tone layer. So keeping track of these spheres is also going to help you put your shadows on there. If you're doing two-tone dust, something like that, and then we can break this dust up a little bit more as it goes. So dust is a great starter effect. You can start very simple and work your way down into details. So this is this is a fairly detailed one. I'm putting lots of little pieces in there. I'm going to overlap some pieces here and I'm going to add tone. You can definitely do it very simple. I said I was going to do it simple and then I didn't. Let's get simpler. That's a bad habit I have. So here, oh, let's do a really simple one. Boop, 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 a little poof going this way. And then go up a little bit. Boop. So you can break this up like that. And then you just want to follow each of the spheres, or in this case I'm just doing little fat circles, and you can have it dissipate as slow or as quickly as you think is necessary. The top part here, I'm going to go a little bit faster. Here's the first circle, bloop, and it's going all the way over here. So it's like a circle and a half. There's like a half a circle in between them. So now the next one, I'm going to just put a little, like it's almost touching it there. Then the next one, I'm going to have it about halfway. So I'm losing momentum as I go because the dust isn't going to maintain that initial velocity it's going to slow out as it goes. And you can have a piece that sort of doesn't want to go as high, lingers a little bit, and then the middle bit that kind of 
half sit. And I like to go along this way where I layer. I just keep layering and then poof. You got, you got a little poof. Bring back my little triangle here. So poof, 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 poof. Simple as that, you can get a cute little poof. And similar to when we were playing with our bubbles, you can really have some fun with this. So here I'm going to do a little bit of a faster poof that has a little bit of a wiggle in it. So now when I play it, there's a little bit of a wiggly piece. If I do the whole thing with wiggly pieces, then we can get some really interesting looks. So have them go in a little bit of a different trajectory or whatever. And then you're starting, it's feeling more like bubbles. It's less of a smoke effect, but these are really fun effects to just play with the timing and see what you can do with them, how you can break them up, how you can uh, explore the form and shape and style. You can do two tones, you can do one tone, you can do line art, thick line art, you can do no line art, you can put blur modules on it, you can put no compositing modules on it. It's just, it's such a fun little thing to play with if you're just getting started and you just want to explore. So let's, let's, I'm just going to add more pieces. So here we can do more of a flash style. Sometimes you'll see flash stuff and it'll get really big hooks and stuff in it. So here, similar direction and velocity. Oops. So this guy's going to hook up like this or he can kind of curl in on itself. That could happen. Let's try that. And then this circle, boop, this guy here. So you can go one piece at a time here, the way I was before. So here I can keep going with this hook. I'll hook along. And a, a lot of the times in flash effects, this is what I call the chew out method. It'll have the, the inside just get closer to the outside. So as opposed to the popcorn method, which is where you start with a circle and then you have a bunch of little circles that kind of break down this way. You'll start with a big circle like this, and then it'll cut into itself and then cut into itself. And so if you're looking at stuff on Pinterest, you'll see a lot of that, or new grounds, you'll see that kind of smoke effect, or you can kind of try and combine the two methods, dissipate. Smoke, because it's a fairly fast and amorphous thing, it, it does have a lot of leeway. You can get away with a lot of different styles. Your timing doesn't need to be ultra precise. Your drawings don't need to be ultra precise. So it's a little bit different than character animation in that way. But the thing that follows from character animation that also works in effects animation is things like arcs and timing. You want to put a little bit of thought into those sorts of things. I don't know how this hybrid is going to work. I did like half of these chew outs and half of these circles. So let's just see how that works. I'm just playing here. Poof, poof, poof. Doesn't look too bad. Poof, poof. Let me put that next to this guy. So you can see you're getting two very different looks for basically the same sort of a, a poof. All right, so let's take this and take it to the next level. So along with little like incidental poofs, impact poofs, stuff like that. Another thing you might expect to do is something like a smoke a smoke stack, you know, smoke coming out of a uh, fire. It just a, a cycle of smoke is what I'm going for. So what we can do, we can take one of these poofs and similar to the way we started our bubbles, we can have it start off really small so it doesn't just hop on the screen and we can create little smoke bits like this. I'm not going to do it too long because I, I don't want to animate for six hours to do a demo. Let's, uh, let's have our smoke repate sort of this way. Like that. There's our first little smoke. And the thing about a cycle is you just keep building those smokes on top of each other. So the next smoke might look... And I'm going to paste these. So... This is going to be a 15 frame cycle because I don't want this to be too super long. And I'm just going to use my paste cycle option to paste a ton of those. So bleh, across my screen and my second smoke bits coming up like this. And I'm just going to follow that to its natural conclusion by going along the timeline. So it's a very similar way to a, how the bubble cycle works. You can just keep layering bits of smoke on top of itself. And that way you can have a bit of fun here playing with different shapes. I'm not I don't really have a plan <laughs> about what my dust is going to look like here, my smoke. So we might get a little bit of a weird 
result. But of course, if you just take a look at some reference, so look at a chimney at winter time, and you'll see what some really nice billowing smoke looks like. Or if you have to do something like a train, you can Google that and see what that looks like so that you have an idea of what shapes your smoke should actually be taking. But in general, you just want to start a little bit small, same as your bubble, so nothing's popping out of the screen, and then figure out how you want to dissipate. Doing the little individual smokes is better for playing around with various dissipating, because you can do these pretty fast. It's easy to explore a lot of different stuff. And then it's just a matter of uh, creating something to hook up, filling in that little gap between the first one and the kind of the last one in the series here. This one's almost looking a little bit more like fire than a smoke, uh, just because of the shapes I went towards. Here we go. So let's play this at half speed and 12 frames per second. This is kind of a halfway between a smoke and a fire because I'm having these little bird shapes. That's something you often see in fire, but hopefully you can see how this cycle method, you can come up with some neat smoke effects and how you can cycle fairly easily. It's it's not nearly as hard as people think. Everybody's mad at me now for giving away the secrets. <laughs> Let's tidy it up a little bit. And the great thing about smoke is if you find that this is just too fast, you can in between it fairly easily. Or if you have a place where it looks like it's speeding up a little bit and then kind of going back to a slower pace, you can fill those fast ones in by adding a little bit of an in-between there. Or if you feel like it's going too slow in places, you can just take out a drawing and, and kind of adjust a little bit after the fact. You don't need to have perfect timing the first time. And smoke also can have a variation in timing. It doesn't have to be super fluid. You can have little puffs of smoke. You can have little extra bits that break off in strange ways. Really, there's just a million ways you could go about it. It's a really underrated little thing to play with dust. It's super good if you're just starting out in effects and you just want an exercise where you can feel like you're getting a lot done because something like a water splash you really have a lot of strict rules about the way water works. And there's, of course, different styles you could go about it. Like anime has a really different way of going about splashes than American style animation. Their anime splashes are a lot more detailed and it has a lot more fast, slow contrast. So that's not something I've done a lot of, but it is something that I've just recently become really interested in. So I'd like to sit down and spend some time playing with anime style effects and see what I could do with those. I think that would be a really fun exercise just for personal growth. But just like any type of animation, you can you can research various styles and stuff and see what kind of stuff is out there. See how different people approach it and try and figure out how they did it, whether they were drawing with their eraser or something like this. I think you'll see a lot of this type of stuff if you're perusing Pinterest and seeing what kind of effects are out there. There's so many effects on Pinterest. I love it. You can go over your cycles as many times as you want until you feel like they're making you happy. You can add little detail -y bits or swooshy bits that kind of fall off or little like this guy just kind of breaks off on the pack and goes off on his own way. Here this piece we can have this part linger a little bit and fall off. But you don't need to get everything right the first time. You can keep adding. You can layer this. So we'll play that and I'd probably want this to go a lot slower so I'm gonna play this on a quarter speed. But now this is six frames per second. And I think the timing is a little bit nicer for smoke. So if this were the case, what I would do is put in halves. So I'd in between by half, and then I would play it on twos. If I had to do it on ones, I'd, I'd half it twice. But I don't feel like that's necessary. All right, so hopefully that gives you some ideas some for some smoke you can play around with. I'm not going to keep going on and on because I think that smoke is something that you can really research easily on your own. There's tons of effects on Pinterest specifically. Go check that out because I'm going to do a couple, record a couple videos tonight because uh, my mom is coming. So hopefully I can get a few under my belt so I've got some stuff to upload over the week. I'm going to talk to Simon tomorrow night. So with any luck and no impending doom, I will have his storyboarding interview up on Sunday. That is the goal of my week so that you guys can hear all about storyboards. I'm super excited. I have so many questions. I don't know how to do storyboarding. I'm so bad at it. So keep an eye out for that. If it's not that, I'll have some video up for Sunday. I don't know what it'll be. I'm going to do another book club soon. I've got a couple here that I might throw in there. 
I don't know what else. Yeah, there's no plan here. Let me know down below what you think about these poof effects, if they were just a really fast overview that were really confusing, or if they made any sense at all. I love hearing from you guys. So please comment, like, share, subscribe, all those things internet people ask you to do, and I will see you in the next video.